let's take a look at number seven. Um, this ties some other things in with what we're doing today. Acceleration, velocity, and position. And in these problems, seven and eight, we're given an acceleration or a velocity for number eight, and we want to find the original position function. Right? Remember that velocity is the derivative of position, acceleration is the second derivative of position. So it's just kind of giving us a little bit of meaning behind the problems that we've been doing up until now. So number seven says the acceleration of a particle moving along the x-axis at time t is given by a of t equals 6t minus 2. If the velocity is 25 when t is 3 and the position is 10 when t equals 1, what's the position at time t? So if it's asking for position at time t, that's asking for just s of t. Right, we just want to know the equation for the position. So, if we have acceleration to get velocity, we can do the antiderivative. In this case, we're doing it in terms of t. So the antiderivative of acceleration is going to be velocity, because derivative of velocity is acceleration. We get 3t squared minus 2t plus c. So now, just like before, we're going to want to figure out what c is. In this case, we're going to use this information, velocity is 25 when t is 3. So 25 equals 3 times 3 squared minus 2 times 3 plus c. So 25 equals 27 minus 6, 21 plus c. So c equals 4. So that gives us our equation for velocity. V of t equals 3t squared minus 2t plus 4. But we're asked to find the position equation. So we have to do the antiderivative of velocity to get position. Right? Antiderivative of velocity is position because position, derivative of the position is velocity. So we get t cubed minus t squared plus 4t plus c. And now we can use the information we're given about the position. The position is 10 when t is 1. So we're putting 10 in for position, s of t, and 1 in for t. So 10 equals 4 plus c which means c is going to be 6. So our position equation, s of t, equals t cubed minus t squared plus 4t plus 6.